Good morning to all of you. Uh, let me first confess that uh, although I'm flattered to be referred to as Dr. Ayer, I'm simple, common mister. I don't have a PhD, but thanks for uh, elevating me. Uh, again, look, this is a, a very, very important topic. Uh, thanks to Ajay and Terry and Dr. Sarkar for inviting me so that I can kind of give you a perspective of uh, the sort of big picture on water and what is the government, uh, what are the government's plans to address in particular the, the drinking water challenge in India. But let me take a step back first and uh, talk about in the context of the SDGs, which this uh, workshop is about, and tell you a little bit about how, what Dr. Sarkar referred to, which was the sanitation challenge. I think it's important to, uh, to go back to that because the works on sanitation still continues, but uh, I think some major milestones have been achieved and we have learned a lot from that experience, which is going to stand us in very good stead for the water program ahead. So I think it's important to spend a couple of minutes on that. Now, uh, as we know, SDGs are 2030. That's the timeline. And uh, when the sanitation program was announced by the Prime Minister uh, in 2014, there were big challenges in that sector. There were about 1 billion people in the world who practiced open defecation, and 60% were in India. So essentially, SDG 6.2 could not have been achieved and cannot be achieved if India hadn't achieved the goals of the Swaj Bharat mission, which was primarily to end open defecation in the country. And there were, if you take only rural India, which is the focus of my ministry, there were about 550 million people in India, in rural India, who were practicing open defecation. So if, what were those big challenges then? Uh, and we like to summarize them as the four S's. And these are going to be similar challenges for water as well. Scale, speed, stigma, because we had to change behavior, and sustainability. How do you sustain those gains? And so the program went on. It's been going on now for the past five years. And uh, major, you know, I think major achievements have been made for a particularly diff difficult challenge because this was not just infrastructure. It was primarily changing behavior. And when you try to change behavior and infra do infrastructure, it becomes that much more difficult. So it had to truly become a Jan Andolan, as the Prime Minister calls it. And what were the four major lessons we learned from this program, which are now we are trying to integrate and mainstream into the water mission? And we shared these lessons, by the way, recently in Addis Ababa with uh, African ministers from four countries who were fascinated and who are now trying to apply these to their local context to scale up sanitation. So the four Ps are the big lessons which we learned from this program. Many of them are intuitive, but I think it's important to emphasize them. The first is political leadership, the first P. And here we had the Prime Minister of India talking about toilets from the Red Fort in his first Independence Day speech. It was unprecedented. I was actually in, in working in the World Bank in Hanoi in Vietnam, and I couldn't believe what I was seeing, very much hoping to come back, and I was lucky to be given that opportunity a year later. The second P is public financing, particularly for sanitation, which uh, most people would acknowledge is a public good. And it was important to put its money where its mouth was for the government. So the government of India and state governments committed more than and spent more than $20 billion, more than a lakh, crores on the sector on sanitation. And the third P was about partnerships, because it could never be a government, a Sarkari program. It had to be done with agencies, with organizations like Terry, international development partners, NGOs, grassroots organizations, elected representatives, everyone. And the fourth P was people's participation, how people owned the program, became accountable for it, and then converted it into a, a true people's movement. So now let me come to water. And how are these lessons now uh, going to be useful to us in the big challenge ahead? Water is, is in many ways more complex. You don't really need to change behavior in terms of stimulating demand for water. Everyone wants clean water. 
uh, whereas we had to create demand for toilets through behavior change. But in water, it's a different kind of behavior change. It's about conserving water. We have Dan here from Israel. They've done phenomenal work on water conservation. We have learned a lot from them, and they continue to guide us. So how do you uh, conserve water, use less water, whether it's for farmers or whether it's at the household level? So that's an important behavior change aspect. Plus, there is a pricing issue. And none of us are used to pay for water, although we have started paying for it. And again, there needs to be some behavior. So it's a different kind of behavior change. But coming back again, big picture on water, you've heard from uh, Dr. Sarkar and probably from earlier speakers. We have only 4% of uh, the world's, you know, in terms of the, the water availability in terms of natural resources. We have 16% of the world's population. So we have uh, water challenges. But the real challenge, I think, as Dr. Sarkar put it very correctly, are the institutional challenges. And in India, uh, many of you would know, water was fragmented institutionally. So in the government of India, there were at least seven or eight ministries or departments which looked at different aspects of water. So we had rural development, we had the Ministry of Environment, Urban, Rural, uh, Water Resources, uh, Land Resources. Everyone had a different piece of that or, or different side of that elephant. So one major step which the, the Prime Minister took in his second term was to try and integrate uh, key aspects or key sectors, subsectors in water, and the Ministry of Jal Shakti was created, which essentially brought together the water resource management aspect and service delivery, service delivery of both drinking water and sanitation, because in the end, when you're talking of integrated water resource management, you've got to look at the whole picture. So I think that was a very, very important first step which was taken. And of course, that integration needs to go further. But at least now, the, the water as a resource is now working very closely with the delivery of water. And uh, I think that was a very, very important institutional step at the national level. And now that's going down, all the way down to the state level. And a couple of states already have integrated their different water, erstwhile water-related departments into a department of Jal Shakti. So institutionally, it became extremely important. Now, again, uh, when you look at the sector as a whole, uh, or you look at the delivery of basic services as a whole, I think this is an important point which needs to be emphasized, that the current government, uh, especially in its first five-year term, it focused to a very large extent on delivering basic services. You know, whether they were bank accounts or toilets or LPG cylinders at home or roads or houses, there was a huge focus on implementation and last mile delivery. And I sometimes like to call it, in many ways, the, poli the, the policy of implementation. It sounds a bit of a contradiction, but I think that delivery, uh, last mile delivery, some people call it first mile, last mile, whatever you call it, it became extremely important. And the one service which hadn't been delivered in the last five years was drinking water. And that is very much on the agenda, on the national development agenda for this government. So let me talk about uh, drinking water, and I'm going to focus on rural drinking water. It's, you know, uh, there's urban, in, in, there are all kinds of challenges across urban and rural, but uh, this program which again was announced by the Prime Minister in his first Independence Day speech in his second term, he announced the Jal Jeevan mission. And the Jal Jeevan mission has got a monumental challenge. Today, if you look at pipe water supply in rural households, the coverage is less than 20%. It's about 18.5, 18, 19%. We have... Uh, adequate water through hand pumps or through public stand posts, that coverage is much higher. So if you look at uh, the way the UN system measures progress towards SDGs, we are okay because we have got hand pumps, we have got public stand posts, we have got dug wells, and it's all safe water. But from a quality of life perspective and from an aspirational perspective, everyone wants a tap in their house. And that coverage in rural India is only 18%. So now the Prime Minister has announced another huge, bold goal, going from 18% to 100% in only five years. 
quite similar to what he announced in 2014 for sanitation, except that water is much more complex, much more challenging, and it's going to take much more doing. So let me uh, share some of the contours of this new program with you. Many lessons we have learned over the last 20, 30 years in terms of integrated water resource management. Traditionally, I come in more from the service delivery part of the, of the yardstick. And in the old days, in all the programs we did, we never really worried about the source or where water was coming from. It was coming from somewhere that was another department, not our responsibility. We only had to manage the delivery. We figured in those days. I mean, today you just can't do that anymore. So under the Jal Jeevan mission, there are three critical components. All of them are mandatory, and we are going to make sure that they work together. The first is to make sure that uh, we focus on what we call source sustainability. And uh, it will be largely groundwater, but it will also be surface water. So making sure that we conserve water and we try to recharge groundwater as you know, in India extracts more groundwater than China and America combined, so it's a big challenge. And so that's going to be an integral part of this program. And supported by another major initiative which was launched by the Prime Minister called the Jal Shakti Abhiyan. And the Jal Shakti Abhiyan was essentially focusing on water conservation or storage of water, Jal Sanchay, at the local level. So we're not talking about big dams. We're talking about how can you, and there are, I'm sure, many NGOs, organizations here who are, who are doing this on an ongoing basis, and we are trying to learn from all of you. So the Jal Shakti Abhiyan, uh, which was started before uh, the Jal Jeevan mission started, focused on 256 of the most water-stressed districts in India, based on data from the Central Groundwater Board, typically in the western part of India. And these 256 districts they started a huge campaign on water conservation, focusing on afforestation, reuse and recharge, renovating traditional bodies, et cetera, et cetera. And this kick-started the whole awareness around the importance of water conservation. And we had a very nice film made for us by the government of Israel. Dan was the person who made that film. Maybe he can tell you about that, which we have been using to promote the importance of water conservation. So that's, again, so lessons from that this campaign where we had 1,200 officers from the government of India going to these districts, working with the locals, and intensifying the work on water conservation. And this is now going to be scaled up. But this part of the program is essentially very, very closely complementary with the Jal Jeevan mission. So source sustainability, water conservation, integral elements of the Jal Jeevan mission. The second part, of course, is the distribution. And, uh, for those in the sector, there will either be single village schemes wherever we have adequate and portable groundwater. And if you don't, then if you've got to bring it in from a distance, then we'll have multi-village schemes, which will be typically managed at a higher level. We are always trying to follow the principle of subsidiarity, managing at the local, local the lowest appropriate level. And it could be at the village level, it could be a level above. Uh, so the management is the second part of this. To the extent possible, we want the villages and communities to take charge, at least locally within the village. And the third part is something which has never been tried before, is the reuse of gray water and the management of gray water. If you're going to provide uh, 55 liters per capita per day, which is the norm which has been set, there's going to be an awful lot of gray water coming out of the kitchen and bathing. And what do you do with that water, which is 70 to 75 percent of the water which come, of which is consumed? So that needs to be managed. And the idea is with low cost treatment to use it either for recharging again the groundwater or even for agriculture. And again, some lessons which we have learned and continue to learn from Israel and other countries. And lots of examples in India as well. Uh, most recently, all of you would know a gentleman called Popat Rao Pawar who was given the Padma Shri for outstanding work on water conservation. Hevre Bazaar, we all know. So there are many examples. There are lots of people here who have done this. We want to make sure that we can reuse this water. So that's the third element. Now, this program, in the end, has, is being implemented by the states. Because as you know, sanitation and water are state subjects in India. So our role in the government of India is to provide a policy framework, some incentives, technical assistance, 
And then in a federal system, we have to work with states. We have to work, and they have to work at the local level. It has to go all the way down to the panchayats and the villages. And ultimately, the Pani Samitis or the village water and sanitation committees will be implementing this program. So it's a major challenge uh, where you know, we are trying to push forward this very, very ambitious agenda. And uh, there will be many challenges. We are already facing them. Uh, everyone needs to understand the key principles of this program. But we're very confident that all the lessons we have learned, whether it's political leadership or public financing or partnerships or people's participation, uh, we're going to need all those lessons adapted to the Jal Jeevan, to the Pani context. This is the program which now we are embarking upon. Uh, and hopefully we can get as many of you involved as possible because I think this program is going to need all hands on deck. So let me stop there and uh, we'll be very happy to join in discussions during the panel. Thank you.